everyone, continuity and limit laws are the topic for this video. Now the reason why we want to learn this stuff is because it gives us a quick way of doing limits by plugging in some numbers and it's going to be a much quicker way. The numerical method is time intensive. It requires that you have a calculator that's really tedious. From the previous videos, the much better method is the graphical method. If you can just graph the function and see what the height of the function approaches, then it's a very quick, easy way to figure out limits. What you're going to find by the end of this video is that using continuity and limit laws, you'll be able to do more complicated things quicker. So we're going to spend a bunch of slides here talking about what is continuity. A function is called continuous at x equals a. You have to like pick an x value and say whether it's continuous at that x value. Okay, f of x is called continuous at x equals a if the limit exists and the limit is actually equal to the height of the function. Remember from the previous video, this number one here, there's a lot built in there. The plus minus is not included. What we really mean is that the left limit exists, the right limit exists, and they're equal to each other. So in in addition to all of those things happening, the height of the function at x equals a is also equal to the value of the limit. There's actually four different conditions built into these two little statements. In this first picture, the height of the function from the left matches up with the height approaching from the right. That means that the limit exists. So the first condition is true. However, f of a is this dot way up here, and f of a is not the same as the height of the left limit and the right limit. So number two is false. So for this picture, this function is not continuous at x equals a. As opposed to this other one over here, example b, so one is true, two is true, so this one is continuous. A little fluffy way to think about it is that in order to be continuous, you have to be able to draw this line without picking up your pen from the paper. You see, I can't do that on the left one. If I'm going to draw the function, I have to pick my pen up off the paper in order to get up at this dot and draw the dot. So the left one is not continuous. With the right one, this dot is filled in. I don't need to pick up my pen from the paper and I can just keep on drawing. Okay, so that is the difference between not continuous at x equals a and continuous at x equals a. If you pick another x value, say if we were to jump over on this picture here to like x equals b, it actually is continuous over here at x equals b because I'm at a different x value. Each x value has its own continuity property. A function is called continuous from the left if the height that the function approaches from the left is equal to f of a, but not from the right. There's a jump. Or you could be continuous from the right. A function is called continuous from the right at x equals a if the height approaching from the right is the same as f of a, the height of the function at that dot. So it's filled in kind of on the right, and this is called continuous from the right. So in order to be continuous, you would be both continuous from the left and continuous continuous from the right. I know that a lot of students coming into this class have a hard time understanding what piecewise functions are, so I want to make sure to put an example here. Make sure within the first week of class that you understand what a piecewise function is. We're going to draw cosine, but only for x values that are negative. Remember at the origin it starts at 1 and it kind of oscillates. Notice that here I only need it for x less than or equal to 0, so I only need the cosine graph to be drawn over here where the x values are negative. Moving on to the next part of the function, I need to draw a straight line with slope 1 and y-intercept 1 when the x values are between 0 and 1. We've got the exponential function happening now in between x equals 1 and x equals 5. And finally, we've got this polynomial here. Like, you might look at this and be like, oh shoot, how do I graph that? I don't remember. Maybe I'm going to do it as a little side computation, right? But one great way of graphing parabolas is to factor it. Like, can just pull an x out. If x is equal to 0, the height of the function is 0, and if x is equal to 5, then the height of the function is 0. Notice that there's this minus sign out in front that got factored out as well, so this we're talking about a downwards parabola, okay? This is like review from pre-calculus. We want this parabola when the x values are greater than 5, actually, so we only want this little piece over here. Whew! Okay, so we've got our function graph. Remember, this is all prerequisite 
good skills. I'm assuming that you know this coming into the class. Now let's actually do a calculus question. Is the function continuous at x equals zero? And one of the biggest parts here is defend your answer. Tell me why. Tell me what do you understand about continuity? What does continuity mean? What does it have anything to do with limits? Can you explain it to me? So here's the explanation that you would need to provide, say, on an exam. If the x values are approaching zero from the left, that's over here, and we're using the cosine function. On the cosine function, the height of the cosine function approaches one. Now let's separately talk about the right limit. The right limit is using this straight line, the x plus one thing. As x approaches zero from the right, the height of that function approaches a height of one. As the x values approach zero from the right. And finally, well at x equals zero, cosine of zero is equal to one. The left limit is one, the right limit is one, and the height of the function is one. Because all of these three things exist and they're all equal to the same number, we can conclude, yes, it is continuous, okay? This is defending your answer. For part B, what type of continuity is happening at x equals one? I hope that you'll conclude looking at the picture that this is continuous from the right. Here's what you would write down. From the left, the height here approaches a height of two. The height approaching from the right is approaching a height of e. And then at x equals one, we're talking about e to the one, which is e. So as you can see, these two agree with each other. The limit from the right agrees with f of one, but this one doesn't agree. So, so it is continuous from the right, but it's not continuous from the left at x equals one. What we're gonna do now is list out continuity properties that you should know from this point forward in the course. Polynomials are continuous for all real numbers. These are kind of typical polynomials. If you pick a point on the graph, does the height from the left agree with the height approaching from the right? And does that further agree with the actual height of the function at that particular point? Yes, of course it does, because polynomials are just, you know, smooth, squiggly things that go from left to right. There's no holes, there's no jumps, there's no asymptotes even, and they're continuous everywhere. Next fact is exponential functions are also continuous on all of the real numbers. Also sines and cosines, these are also continuous on all real numbers. The domain of the function for logarithms is x being greater than zero. So logarithms are continuous as long as you stay on the domain and finally, is rational functions. Remember from pre-calculus is that a rational function is a polynomial divided by a polynomial. So rational functions are continuous on everywhere on the real line, except, that's what this little slash line means, except for the zeros of the denominator. One over x, that, that's continuous everywhere except for at x equals zero. So one over x is continuous at x equals one, it's continuous at x equals two, everywhere except for x equals zero. Two over x minus three. X equals three is not allowed. That's not part of the domain. So x equals three needs to be excluded. And finally, down the bottom here, the denominator is zero if x is either plus or minus five. So negative five needs to be excluded and also positive five. This is stuff that you need to know. This is the calculus material that you need to know for this week. How can we use it to actually find limits? This is a polynomial divided by a polynomial. Here, x is approaching one. Is this function function continuous at x equals one? Well, sure it is. Therefore, what we get to do is actually just plug in one. Isn't this great, right? Continuity is awesome because we can just plug in one and the answer is negative four. Remember from the previous slide that the sine function is continuous actually everywhere. So we can actually just plug in x equals pi. Remember that sine of pi is equal to zero. So here the value of the limit is zero. Okay, let's do another one because the denominator is not zero. It is continuous and we can just plug it in. And finally, one more example. Exponential functions are continuous on the whole real line. We can actually just plug in ln of two. Don't forget basic stuff, right? E to the ln of two power simplifies to just two because the E and the ln cancel each other. They're inverse functions. Now, wasn't that great? We didn't have to graph anything. That You can do more complicated stuff and you can just like plug in numbers as long as things are continuous. What we're covering next is limit laws. You can take a limit where two things are added together and separate it and just do the limit of the first piece and then add it to the limit of the second piece. This actually works with minus signs as well. If you're taking the limit as x approaches a of like six times a function, you can actually just take that six and pull it out and just do the limit of the function. 
Okay, linear is a word that's used all over the place in mathematics. In the context of limits, this is what it means. You can separate over plus signs and you can pull constants out in front. The next limit law is that limits are multiplicative. If you have two things multiplied together, it's okay. As long as they each individually exist, then you can multiply and do each separately. And the same thing for division. As long as the denominator is not zero, right? Because remember, if the denominator is zero, then like that would not exist. Now that we know what limit laws are, this is going to make finding limits of complicated expressions easier because we can break it down into pieces. We're going to take the limit of the tangent, just like by itself, and the limit of the number one, and the limit of the x squared, and the limit of the five, like individual pieces breaking it up. Don't forget that tangent is sine over cosine, so this is sine of zero over cosine of zero. That's zero over one. Zero over one is equal to zero. The next piece over here, but we've just got a constant here, which is the number one. One. There's no x's. This is just one. So it stays one. Same thing down here for the five. X can go to zero all day. Five is still five. Polynomials are continuous everywhere. I can just plug in any number. Putting everything together, my final answer is one fifth. Okay, one more example here. We're going to use the limit laws because polynomials are continuous. So it's okay for me to just plug in x approaching negative one. We get one sixth. In order to use the graphical method, you have to be able to graph the function. If you don't know what the graph of the function is, this method isn't going to help you. Numerical method, like we said at the beginning of the video, is pretty tedious, but numerical method we probably don't want to use very often. Continuity and limit laws, if you use them correctly, you can actually just plug in numbers as long as you don't get zero in the denominator. So I hope that you'll challenge yourself and go look for more problems in the book. Check out the homework online and we'll see you in class soon.